ne mahu mahu tata matwa e faka wahe Although centuries have passed, both Papatuanuku, Mother Earth, and Ranginui, the Sky Father, pine to be together, to rekindle their long embrace. It was their son, Tane Mahuta, the god of forests and birds, with agreement from some of his brothers, who ultimately separated Ranginui and Papatuanuku. This ended the eternal realm of Tepo, the darkness cast them, as well as us, into the light of Te Ao Marama. To this day, Ranginui and Papa Tuanuku continue to pine for each other. Rain droplets like this enable both our primordial parents to remain connected and to sustain us. There are a number of Atua Wahine, personified maidens, known by different names, who help Papa Tsuvanuku and Ranginui to stay connected to each other. Here we see clouds are expressions of love that are manifested by Papa Tsuvanuku and are carried by the Mist Maiden, who some refer to as Hinepu Kohurangi, and the Maiden of Light and Misty Rain, who we'll refer to as Hinewai. The rising mists and vapours they help to create are collected by Tawhiri Matia, God of Wind, creates shelter for Papa Tuanuku and cover for Ranginui. While the Maiden of Rain, known by some as Hine Te Horangi, helps carry Ranginui's tears down to Papa Tuanuku. This single raindrop, like others, encapsulates the love between Papa Tuanuku, Mother Earth and Ranginui, Sky Father, and is the essence of life that sustains all living things, including us. An average of nearly 22 billion cubic metres of rain falls in the Bay of Plenty each year. Some of that surface water evaporates into the air, where it cools down and then falls as rain. About 70% of that rainfall soaks into Papatuanuku, the land, and becomes groundwater. While about 30% of it becomes surface water that we see in our lakes, rivers, and oceans. Groundwater is all water that's contained under the Earth's surface and comes from rainfall and river water that percolates through the ground. Groundwater accumulates in underground water-bearing layers that are called aquifers. This single rain droplet is making its way into an aquifer. Here, it seeps through the soil. Rain droplets can be absorbed through cracks and crevices in rocks in the earth. As you can see, water flows through tiny pores contained in soil and rock. Layers of gravel, sand and fractured rock act like a sponge soaking up water to form an aquifer. Unlike rivers and streams, groundwater flows slowly. Once water is underground, it migrates downwards until it's trapped by layers that are difficult or impossible for water to pass through. These are known as non-permeable layers or confining layers and are made up of materials such as clay and dense rock. This layer defines the aquifer, which we see here as an unconfined aquifer. An unconfined aquifer is also known as the water table. It's like water you see when digging a hole in the sand at the beach. Aquifers connect to springs and rivers and if water is taken from it, a reduction of flow can occur in these waterways, which is why there are some restrictions imposed when drawing groundwater from aquifers. Under the confining layer that's made up of impermeable rock, we can see a confined aquifer. It's separated from the unconfined aquifer by impermeable layers such as silt or clay. It can take days months or even decades before this single raindrop resurfaces. 
aquifers are continuously renewed by rainfall or from rivers, streams or lakes as water seeps through the ground replenishing the water table. Their flows are more consistent than that of a river or stream that fluctuates with heavy rainfall or as a result of a drought. Aquifer levels can handle water being taken year round as long as the water taken isn't more than is naturally replenished. In volcanically active areas, groundwater can be heated by magma underneath the Earth's surface. Here, water penetrates through the cracks or faults that make contact with hot rocks which heats the water. The amount of underground pressure determines how fast and how far the hot water flows to the surface where it may form a geothermal surface feature like a mud pool or a hot spring. Geothermal groundwater is defined as having temperatures that are over 30 degrees Celsius. Traditionally, people gravitated to major catchments across the Bay of Plenty. Within these catchment communities are numerous iwi and hapū boundaries signifying the close connection between Tangata Whenua and Wai Māori, fresh water. These catchment areas are made up of underlying aquifers that carry water across the Bay of Plenty. Bay of Plenty Regional Council collects groundwater data from numerous bores across the Rohe region, including from water meters that record consented use. It's committed to advancing data collection about groundwater because it enables us, Regional Council, Iwi and Hapu, as well as the wider community, to understand how much water, why Māori, there is in our Rohe region, where it is, and its quality. It also empowers us to be able to make better decisions about how water is used. All water is connected. Like the raindrop we've followed, in this diagram of the hydrological cycle, rain falls or precipitates and creates either runoff or becomes groundwater. It's either absorbed by the ground or becomes surface water that's found in our lakes, rivers and oceans. Surface water evaporates before condensation happens. Mātauranga Māori, or Māori knowledge, also emulates the hydrological cycle and illustrates how Ngātua Wahine, female personifications, follow the cycle. These maidens are known by many names, including Para Whenua Mea, the maiden who helps Wai Māori, fresh water, to be absorbed as groundwater as well as flow through surface runoff, like lakes, rivers and oceans. While the ocean maiden, referred to by some as Hine Moana, looks after the waters of the oceans. Both Hine Pū Kohurani, the maiden of mist, and Hine Wai, maiden of light misty rain, are sent by Hine Moana. They provide shelter to Popotuanuku, Mother Earth, and cover to Ranginui, the Sky Father. The rising mists and vapours are collected by Ranginui and Papatuanuku's son, Tawhirimātia, the god of weather, who weaves the mist and vapour into the clouds for his father. The Bay of Plenty is a unique landscape and defined by two primary geological features which are volcanic and sedimentary rocks. Volcanic rocks include ignimbrite, rhyolite and andesite while sedimentary rocks include sandstone, mudstone and siltstone that's generally from substances derived from erosion of the land. The Bay of Plenty covers a land mass of about 1.2 million hectares and is home to many major rivers that end in estuaries and harbours. The region extends from Waihi Beach in the west and stretches to the North Island's chain of mountain ranges in Te Uruwera. They are Huiarau and Te Ika Whenua ranges in the east. The region also includes the Waiaweka catchment towards the steep Raukumara ranges extending as far as East Cape and Cape Runaway. Bay of Plenty includes the Rani Taiki, the Motu, Tauranga rivers as well as geothermal waters. The region is also home to multiple geothermal systems found in areas like Waimangu, Rotorua, Tauranga and Kawero. These systems lie in the Taupo volcanic zone that extends southwards into Waikato and offshore to Whakari, known as White Island in the north. Water is essential to sustaining life. 
It is a taonga tukuiho, a prized resource which we inevitably all value. The Bay of Plenty Regional Council and the community manage natural fresh water on the ground surface and underground and monitors our waterways to ensure there's enough water to sustain people as well as wildlife now and in the future. The Bay of Plenty Regional Council was committed to acknowledging and adopting Mātauranga Māori, Māori knowledge. Mātauranga Māori recognises the deep kinship Māori have to Te Taiao, the natural world, and recognises that water bodies have a Māori, a life force, including wai ora, pure water, wai Māori, fresh water, and wai ariki, water from the gods, also known as hot springs or curative water. With your help and understanding how water such as fresh water reaches the taps in our homes, we can collaboratively do a small part to maintain a manaki look after water. Nā te mōhio tāna kamārama. Through knowledge comes understanding. Thriving together, mō te taio, mō nā tāna tā, for the environment and for the people.